and power was communicated so i believe god with you today that this is the season where the unchanging nature of god will be fully affected in all that concerns you i see mind brain testimony dead coming to life mighty manifestation immunity somebody macheted from head to toes and not one enter the skin it takes the, the divine preservative power of god to exempt you from the onslaught of wickedness from the onslaught of hell not everybody is killable not everyone is diable there are people even if they decide to die death will not accept them because they have not fulfilled their mandate and their assignment nobody yet dies nobody nobody yet dies premature the number of your days you will fulfill if your amen is louder you are the one i just spoke to glory to god we are having just the second service there's no third service so those who are waiting for the third service i don't know if you can send them a message or something amen amen we have been having back to back all this week is that true back to back and when you are all going to rest i'm continuing my own tomorrow morning tomorrow morning tomorrow evening next tomorrow morning next tomorrow evening wednesday in abuja back to back so it's very proper that amen hallelujah so we're going to know everything that god will do you know the third service is a brutal service yeah so everything will happen here we are combined we are jamming that double portion here third service is brutal is very very acidic corrosive volatile very lethal very lethal amen glory be to god all right let's receive our tithe this morning what a god we serve tithe is not a law it is what a covenant abraham did not exist under the law abraham was before the law and abraham paid tight so tight is a covenant wait wait you are going to hear people you hear people say some things that bill gates is rich does he pay tight warren buffett is rich does he pay tight elon musk is rich does he pay tight of course they do they pay tight by charity most of the heavily wealthy men around the world are committed to ngos that's their titan you must give some way have you seen people how many of you come from riverine areas riverine areas where they have water 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 log by elsa any riverine put your hand down how many of you know that most in those riverine areas they have scarcity of toilets are you aware so what the people do is they defecate around the river is that true they finish swimming and they just defecate around the river and the water goes carries their excreta gives the fish to eat they go back they kill the fish they eat the fish they defecate again they feed the fish and go back kill the fish they give and they receive they give so life is give and take amen father we ask that the grace and the benefit on titus rest upon us in jesus mighty name I've been through thick and thin. I've been through trials. Nobody thought I would come out from. I come, I come the way. You stood me tall in the midst of the mall. I'm a living testimony. You've done what no man can do. We know my sacrifice. We know the victory. I'm not afraid. 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 I'm not
free from the burden of sin. Genesis 26 13. The man went was great. He went he works great. He went forward and he grew until he became 
Very good. Genesis 26, 13. God's desire is for your continuous, daily, monthly, weekly increase. Esther 9, 4. Mordecai works greater and greater. God wants you to be great continuously. That's the plan of God. Acts 9, 22, I believe. Also, we see that in, in the book of... The Bible says Saul increased more and more. God went to continually increase. Increase. Exodus 1, 7. They increased and they were fruitful in the land. God wants your continuous, permanent increase in life. So we're going to pray right now, standing on God's word. He said, the man was great. Go back to Genesis 26, 13. The man waxed great, went forward, grew until he became very great. Waxing great is a dimension of greatness. Going forward. It's a dimension of greatness. Growing is a dimension of greatness. Being very great is an indescribable, a level of greatness that cannot be articulated in words. We're going to pray that Lord, as I move towards the end of the year, I will wax great. I will go forward. I will grow until I become very great. I will wax great. I will go forward. I will grow until I become very great. I will wax forward. I will what? I will wax forward. I will become I will until I become very great. I will wax great. I will go forward. I will grow until I become very great. I will wax great. I will go forward. I will grow until I become I will wax great. I will I will until I become, I will wax great. I will go, I will grow until I become, I will wax, I will wax great. I will go, I will, until I become, I will wax, I will, I will, until I become, for the last time, I will wax, I will go, I will until I become so that shall be your inheritance this end of the year that shall be your inheritance this end of the year say my father my father in the name of Jesus as I begin to pray this end of the year I will wax great I will go forward I will grow until I become very great I will wax great I will go forward I will grow until I become very great open your mouth and turn that to prayer now Radorose Rekete Rekete Payaga Pasokotos Akaraya Ladash Aragado sopra da yadas, i capali ara da gayadas, raquasides, raquono do balaga da gada, rega lega de rega da, rega lega lega lega, 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 rega lega lega lega. Regenerate, <laughs> 
In Jesus name So shall it be It is done It is done That shall be your portion In the name of the Lord Jesus I am your own I am your own Till the day you will come Jesus, I am your own. I am your own. I am your own. Till the day you will come. Jesus, I am your own. I am your own. I am your own. Till the day you will come Jesus I am I am your own I am your own Till the day you will come Jesus I am your own I am your own See the day You will come Jesus I am your own I am your own See the day You will come Jesus I am your own Till the day you will come 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 Just pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Ghost. Malalalala la kabadash. Till the day you will come. Blessed be your name, Lamb of God. No one ever cares for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as him. No one else could take my sins and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for me. Alabalada Shaka. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Every song that I sing. All my trophies I bring, Lord, I give them all over to you. Glory, glory, Lord, I believe you have laid down your life for me. Jesus, Jesus, every praise, every praise I receive, Lord, I give them 
all over to you every song that I of my trophies trophies I bring Lord I give them all over one more time glory Praise and praise I receive, Lord. I give them all over to you. Every song that I all my trophies, all my trophies I bring, Lord. I give them all over to you. Every song that I sing, every song that I sing, all my trophies, all my trophies I bring, Lord, I give them all over to you. Oh, every song that I sing, every song that I sing, all my trophies, all my trophies I bring, Lord, I give them. All over to you. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Clap those hands for the Lord and take your seat. Jeremiah chapter 22. I want us to read verse 29 and 30 together. I'll read 29. You will read 30 together. Jeremiah chapter 22, 29 and verse 30. Oh, at! 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 Some of you can say at, at, at. Some oral English people don't call it at. They call it at. If you call this art what will you call the one here i don't know call it art okay so but you know what i'm talking about oh art 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 hear the word of the lord thus hear the lord write ye this man childless a man that shall not prosper in his days for no man of his seed shall prosper sitting on the throne of David ruling anymore in Judah when the act is against you I want to consider that briefly and then we'll start in a thousand directions when the act is against you the only thing that compares the heaven is the earth and that's why in Genesis 2 1 Bible said God finished creating the heavens and the earth the only thing that come that compares the heaven is the earth you must understand that the earth is not a location the earth is a realm the earth is a realm and no matter your expertise until you conquer the realm called the earth realm you keep struggling the earth realm is a realm that you must conquer to advance in the journey of life nobody is stronger than you nobody is more powerful than you whether they are diabolical or they are supernatural the only thing that makes them ahead of you is because the earth was committed to wicked men the bible says in job chapter 9 verse 24 job 9 24 he said who is he and where is he the earth has been connected is given to the hand of the wicked he covered the face of judges if not somebody say if not say if not i'm not sure you understand that say if not say it now say if not he said where and who is he who are you 
if not that you are connected to the operations of the earth and you have an advantage over me who are you where do you come from that you hit your hand on your chest and you are arrogant you make boasts and declarations that you will make me see and make my children expire who are you if not that the earth is working in your favor he said if not the earth has been committed to the hand of wicked man who is he where is he where did he come from who is a harbalist to be arrogant if not that he has powers from the earth who is a harbalist who is a necromancer who is a stargazer who is an enchanter to make arrogant declarations against me if not that the earth is working for him we came to take charge we came to tell them that what you are using against us belongs to us for the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof what you are using against me belongs to my father i make a declaration anyone walking on his feet to curse you i walk on my feet to reply them Amen. anyone walking on his feet to curse you i stand on my feet to reply them Amen. anyone walking on his feet to construct evil against you the bible says he make his angel spirits and his ministers flames of fire he frustrate the talking of liars he make diviners mad i make a declaration as you hear the sound of my voice we frustrate their powers Amen. take your seat there are people hear me there are people who listen to me very well there are people who are who are after you and you don't know why you can't trace why i will tell you why because you don't know why you can't trace why you don't understand i will tell you you don't understand why what you have done to attract such battles 90 percent of our battles are not because of who we are and not because of what we've done and not because of where we come from they're because of where we are going to there is something they know about you that you don't know why was balak hired to curse why was balaam hired to curse israel you know what balak said balak said there is a people rising up they're becoming like the sand of the sea he said please come and curse them because if not they will become so great not for what they did all the 21 altars that we are raised we are not raised because of what israel did it was real because where israel was going was something that balak could not comprehend hear me and hear me well there was a man called samson samson said to his father i have found a girl that i want to marry she pleases me well and the father said don't you have a woman from the tribe of your fathers tell me one from here and i will give her to you he said no she pleases me well and the bible said he took his father and he took his mother and while they were going to see the prospective in-law a lion came against samson the bible did not say a lion came against them he said lion came against samson there were three people walking there were several people in their entourage a lion did not come against them a lion came against samson if you ask me well samson was a youth he could run from the lion if there was anyone that should be targeted it should be the parents because they were old the lion came against samson why not the father he had no assignment to fulfill why not the mother she had no assignment to fulfill why samson he had a destiny so the lion came hear me and hear me well the reason for your battle the reason for your hardship the reason for the mountain the reason for the limitation the reason for the orchestration the reason for the affliction is because there is a future i know the thoughts that i take towards you thoughts of peace and not of evil to give to you an expected end somebody shot fire 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 let me tell somebody i have a future tell someone i have a future tell someone i have a future I have a future God caused the earth when man rebelled God placed a curse on the earth because God knew that the only thing that could contain the heavens is the earth there's a power in the earth realm when Jesus saw a man that was born blind Jesus looked at him and his disciples asked the question who did sin this man of his parents that tells you that <laughs> there can be an 
and affliction by reason of the connection to foundation but Jesus said not this man nor his parents but that the son of God and the works of God might be fulfilled in him but there is a problem we need to balance something he looked at the ground he said now I can trace where this is coming from the earth realm is working against this man the earth realm is contending he took clay from the ground and spat on it am I talking to somebody spitting on clay is when the heaven kisses the earth and it's spat on it when it's spat on it he made clay of the spittle and he put it on his eye in other words what was wrong and fighting you young man is that the earth was against you and when Jesus turned the earth in his favor the Bible says said go and wash in the pool of Siloam I don't understand how can you tell a man to go and wash a man that was blind Jesus said go and wash how can I wash when I don't know the location to where I can wash because I can see I imagine that man in the realm of the spirit and his eyes were shut can I say this to you it is bad enough that he was blind Jesus put clay to increase the blindness can I use it let me use English he was blind Jesus made him blinder Because if I need to see, you don't have to cement my eyes. If I need to see, you don't have to cement it. But can I surprise you? Why did Jesus use the clay? Man was made from clay. Jesus does not patch, he creates. We don't have a God that patches, he creates. He was recreating a new site for him. He was recreating, reforming something new. He said, you go and wash. And I look at that man, still blind. And while he was going, he couldn't see. And he would stumble on somebody. They said, can't you see? Where are you going? He said, I'm going to the pool of Siloam. He said, take left. And he's going again. He stumbles on somebody. Can't you see? He said, I'm going to the pool of Siloam. Take right. He stumbles again. Listen to me, child of God. Just keep moving. You may not know where you are going. Just keep moving. You may not see your tomorrow yet. Just keep moving. If God has said move, move. You may not know where you are going. You may make mistakes. You may stumble on issues. Just keep moving. Anyone you stumble on, anything you stumble on is preparing you for your destination. Let me tell somebody I am going somewhere. I am going somewhere. I am going somewhere. I am going somewhere. Somebody shout fire, fire, fire. Earth is a realm. Jesus knew the power of the earth. The success is of men are not tied to their expertise or their professionalism. The successes of men are tied to the cooperation of the earth in their direction. The Bible speaks about a man in Luke chapter 12. He said there was a man. I like the way the Bible started the illustration. There was a rich man. There was a rich man. His ground brought forth plenteously. Luke chapter 12 and verse 16. His ground. So that, that man was not rich because he was a hard worker. That man was not rich because he was connected. That man was not rich because he had experience. That man was not rich because he had technical know-how. That man was not rich because he had idea. The man was rich. The Bible says because his ground blood fought plentifully his ground the earth cooperated with him the earth he had dominion over the earth he cooperated he understood the principle on how to make the earth move in his favor so people are stranded not because they are not beautiful not because they are not experienced not because they are not literate not because they don't have ideas not because they don't have connection not because they don't have content not because they don't have contact people are where they are because the earth is against them the earth is fighting against them there was a woman that was about to be swallowed up the dragon came after her the dragon raised up his voice but the bible say in revelation chapter 12 down to verse 16 and the earth helped the woman it doesn't matter what fights a man if the earth helps him he gets victory it doesn't matter what confronts a man the bible says the, the, the dragon rose up against the woman but the earth cooperated I'm speaking to someone under the sound of my voice it doesn't matter the battles you are going through I decree the earth will help you 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 if your amen is louder you are the one I'm talking to the 
battles of life the battles of life is in the earth realm the battles and issues of life the bible says in matthew 13 25 the wheat and the tares grew up in the earth realm there was a battle in the earth realm why men slept an enemy came and so tears and went his way now hear me anytime i read that portion i have preached on that year before something gets me provoked in my spirit the bible said the enemy came why men slept and so tears and went his way and went his way he so tears among the wheat and went this way what the devil cannot stop he corrupts what the devil cannot destroy he counterfeits there are things the devil cannot stop so he corrupts it he counterfeits it he said and he went his way the, ang the anger of god towards your enemies is on the platform of their rascality and impunity you make a woman barren and you are going your way and i saw that i asked myself a question you stop somebody's way why are you going your own way if you stop me from going my way you cannot go your way you have no way to go if you stop my way so you know it's good to go somewhere and you are stopping me from going somewhere you stop me from going somewhere and you now you are going somewhere if you stop me from moving you are going nowhere am i talking to somebody right now impunity he did it and went his way there are people who have thrown attacks on certain people and they are going about saying nothing can happen nothing can happen have you seen people eyeball to eyeball make pronouncements and they say i'll do this to you and nothing will happen they will do this to you and nothing will happen he went his way impunity temerity audacity rather sagacity rascality brutality ferocity that you you ruin a whole family and you are still alive what are you doing alive what are you doing alive you destroy the marriage kill the man kill the children and you are still breathing no you don't deserve to live am i communicating a woman from from Oyo state came she had three daughters she didn't have a son three daughters the youngest was a very small girl unmarried 51 very small very young 51 now as if that was that, that there's somebody stopping them from getting married is even bad enough they gave all of them fibroids and they kept cutting off it will grow again cutting off and all of them were old in a house graduates i walked in here one time i saw on the altar crying praying elderly woman crying praying when she should be resting she was still toiling I said, how do they survive? He said, I give them from my pension. I said, don't they work? He said, work. They are in pain every day from the fibroids. We will cut it, operate it, it will grow again. And while we are praying, I held her, and while I was praying, I had the name, I said, who is this person? He says, my sister, my only sister. I said, what does she say? He said, no, 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 she's not the one. She's not the one. I said, she's not, no, she's not the one. She's not the one. I said, but that's what the Lord is telling me. She knows what is going on. I said, no, 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 she's not the one. I said, give me a picture. She gave me. She brought the sister's picture as part of those she's praying for there's nothing as painful as when your enemy is your prayer partner and then i lifted the picture i said father if wickedness is good let this woman taste it if wickedness is good let her taste it two weeks later she was rushed here what was her condition she got so afflicted demented elderly man demented afflicted she will poo poo eat it we we drink it poo poo eat it we we drink it poo poo eat it now she was she will wait and the people come at you so they will hold her 
she will start the fight they will leave it she will eat her face a poopoo drink a pee that's the highest level of judgment from god and when they brought her i said to her mama you are not going to die quick you will die slowly but you will only die and die in peace when you open your mouth and begin to confess right there he said no need she opened up and began to confess and the lady was amazed she came to the office to, to see me with a beret on her head when i mean you know beret christians you know beret christians those no earring no makeup no so that kind of deception there's nothing wrong in that but there are many people who are hiding under that to provoke wickedness and hatred to provoke wickedness perpetual anybody in your family that is a victim listen to this that's a victim of a witchcraft spell anyone in your family that's a victim of a satanic agenda today in the name of jesus that strong man dies in a hurry that strong man dies in a hurry Ayakata Bradasha. Some time ago, I was praying. I went somewhere for prayer. Listen to this and let's just go on. I went some to my prayer place for prayer. While I was praying, I have a prayer partner who some of you may know, an elderly man. While we are praying together, somebody wanted to see me. So I pleaded with him. I said, Could you please help me? Just tell them I don't want to see anybody now. He went downstairs and he told them. The next he came up and he was speaking in tongues. Speaking, why are you speaking in tongues? He was speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues. Why are you speaking in tongues? He was speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues. And I said, Calm down. The way you are praying, there's a problem you saw downstairs. He said, Yes. And he told me one of the pastors who was dancing, one of my very good pastors, good sons. As what was going on? They said the daughter died. So he heard I was there. He brought the daughter, grown up girl, brought the daughter's corpse in the car. In the cab. And I was praying. And I said, did you touch? I said, she's dead. She's gone. And I told him, excuse me. He said, okay. I said, no. Excuse me, miss. You should leave. And he left. And I did something. Don't ask me what I did. Before Jesus raised the dead, he told them, leave. I did something. I activated covenant. There's nothing as powerful as covenant. Where your strength and... Why was Peter sleeping in the prison? Convenant. They're about to kill you the next day and you're sleeping. The guy was walking on the wings of covenant. That's why every believer must strive to get to a level of covenant work with God. With all we have done, with all going on in this world today, why can't God destroy the earth? There's a covenant of the rainbow. God, God honors covenant. I said, step out. And he said, ah, should I go to the room? This is the sitting room. I said, just leave this place. And he left. I said, five minutes, okay. When we finished, the Lord told me what was wrong. And I went downstairs. Cold. I got to the car, put the girl's head on my lap, and I sat down. He said, rather than my name to be polluted among the hidden, I will intervene. And I activated covenant. And I spoke and prayed. She opened her eyes. She jerked back to life. She sat, wait. She sat down. And we're excited, we're happy. They left. And my prayer partner was, wow, 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 wow. We thought we were done. Less than 45 minutes, my phone was on fire. My phone was ringing, ringing, ringing. The pastor said he just got a message that his mom just slumped dead. He said, man of God, another one has happened. I said, nothing happened. It was back to sender. Back to sender. I said, Jeremy, I'm not praying for your mom. Go home, bury your mother. Don't keep her one week or two weeks. Bury her immediately. And in the burial, do not cry. If a grandmother does not value a grandchild, then she has no business being alive. Am I talking to somebody right now? Anything they fired at you, may it go back to those who fired it. Anything fired at you, 
under which you are suffering now fire that your brother fire that your sister fire that your relative fire that your job fire that your health anything fire that you under which are and suffering now it backfires yeah. it backfires <laughs> it backfires 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 somebody shot fire yeah 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 If wickedness is good let them taste it if to make a man depressed is sweet let them eat it and there are people who are laboring under the hatred of another man just just hating is bad enough but to move beyond hating and implement structures for retrogression structures for subversion structures for diversion to subvert a man from his course the lord approved not for who is it that saith a thing and it cometh to pass lamentation street 36 and 37 when the lord commanded it not if you have been a victim here of a finger of witchcraft of an altar that is crying of a satanic stronghold someone praying like libation on a shrine to continually service an altar i stand to make a declaration on your life that power expires today expires today expires today take your seat The earth realm, the earth can hear. The earth has ears, it can hear. You see, hear, O earth. The earth has a face, it can see. Genesis 4 14, Genesis 6 1. You see, Genesis 4 14 says the, the earth that opened to, to take thy brother's blood. God used it again in Cain. The earth has a face, the earth can see. Am I communicating? The earth can see. It is not your labor that actually brings success. It is the earth. No matter what you put into life, if the earth is dysfunctional, then you will have struggle to reap. The Bible says in Genesis 8:22, while the earth remained, God said, "Let me establish that before you go further." I know you love seed time. I know you love harvest. I know you love summer. I know you love winter. I know you love cold. I know you love heat. But before all of these things can work, while the earth remains, I know you love education. I believe also in the academia. But while the earth remains, I know you are a young lady and you want to get married. You are believing for settlement. But this must happen when the earth remains. So no matter your expertise and your labor, if the earth is dysfunctional, the effort ends in futility while the earth remains. Sit time and have cold and heat day and night summer and winter shall not cease but while the earth remains when you have been able to deal and put balance on your earth realm no matter the effort you put into life you get profit while the earth remains there is a release of grace on the earth today the earth realm is about to produce for you the earth realm is about to swing in your favor the earth realm is about to dance in your direction the earth realm is about to bring forth that which it has kept and held all this while somebody say while the earth remains say while the earth remains 
what makes a king what makes a prince what puts them in their palaces what enthrones them and make them eternal excellency and praise on the earth is the delivery of the earth the bible says in ecclesiastes 5 from verse 9 the profit of the earth is for all but the king is served from the feet by the field what makes a man a king now listen to me the profit of the earth is for all meaning the earth is supposed to bring forth for everybody but the reason some are kings is because the earth is not just for them the earth serves them the earth bows to them the earth cooperates with them the earth the first phrase there means that this is the original intention of God for the earth realm that it should produce for everybody he said but there are some people that become royalty not because they were born kings not because they were born as royalty but because the earth serves them bow your head and look at the ground look at the ground everybody and point your forefinger your index finger on your right hand point your index finger on your right hand to the ground say oh earth at all oh, earth hear the word of the lord you shall favor me oh earth hear the word of the lord you will favor my seed you will favor my family earth oh earth hear the word of the lord you cannot rise against me earth oh earth all my virtues you have swallowed vomit them out vomit them out earth oh earth cooperate with me for my next level somebody shout fire 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 when you get when you get to a point in your life if you have not gotten to that point in your life of asking questions it means that the battles you are confronting are not uphill ones everyone gets to a point in life where he has to ask questions how come i am praying things are getting worse hey moses asked that question god you called me you are not like moses who saw a burning bush even a man who saw a burning bush he saw confrontations and he asked god a question in exodus i think chapter 5 it should be verse 23 or verse 29 i can't remember he said how come that pharaoh has refused to let them go rather he has increased their labor he has increased their labor exodus not ecclesiastes exodus he said he has increased their labor and in other words you sent me to bring these people out but right now they are in pain because since i came into their life their problem has increased when those who have been said verse 23 for since i came to pharaoh to speak in thy name he has done evil to these people neither has thou delivered thy people at all this is not what you told me if i knew you were calling me to become a reproach to add to the pains of people i would not have answered there's always a time when it appears that what you are sent to conquer is conquering you there's always a time when it appears like the more you pray the more you see a backfire effect there's always a time where the more you fast the more the mountains rise but if only you can persist and you can push forward and take dominion over the powers of the earth realm and say to god the earth must produce that which belongs to me is it a job the earth will deliver it is it your money the earth will deliver it is it your rest the earth will deliver it is it your lips you know the earth will deliver it somebody say oh earth vomit my blessings Oh earth, vomit my testimony. Oh earth, vomit my lifting. Oh earth, vomit my rising. It's part of the earth. Verse 30. Bring that up. Bring verse 30 up. Jer Jeremiah 22. Let's articulate and take it one by one. Be Jeremiah 22, verse 30. Jeremiah 22 and verse 30. He said right that did this man be childless when the earth is against the man the first evidence of that battle of that finger that onslaught from the earth realm is that there's no productivity fruitfulness is not capacity to bear fruitfulness is capacity to bear after your kind
when two dark men, when I say dark men, a black woman, a black skin, a dark skinned woman, a dark skinned man copulate, they mate, the woman gets pregnant and delivers an you know they call mixed child. It's not dark, it's not white, it's in between. Huh? Deliver a colored baby. Guess what happens? Right there and then the man will say, This is not. But did she give birth? Did she give birth? The man said, This is a colored child. This is not. Because it's not after my kind. With all the deposit God has put in you, what is coming out from you is not your kind. With all you carry inside you, this kind of life is not your kind. Am I communicating? With the deposits of God on your life, with the promises of God that you have, this kind of life is not your kind. This kind of low life of struggling, living from hand to mouth. Am I talking to somebody here? This kind of, of struggling, living from hand to mouth. This kind of life that you labor like an elephant and eat like an ant is not your kind there is something better there is a response better there's a productivity that is better god has given a word and he has sent me to tell you that after now you will give birth after your kind being fruitful is not an advice it is a command in Genesis 1 28 Genesis 1 26 God said be fruitful Genesis Genesis 1 Exodus 1 7 God said the children of Israel they were fruitful in the land producing after your kind what does it mean to be unfruitful to lack evidence what does it mean to be unfruitful to labor without favor what does it mean to be unfruitful to lack substance 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 that you are desperate for marriage doesn't mean you should marry anybody it doesn't you can marry everybody never get to that point of being desperate and you have no preference you have no choice eh? you are so desperate you say Lord man a man just bring the man the Bible says consigning Ezekiel Ezekiel prophesied and bone began to join to his bone but there was no flesh in the bone so don't just marry the bone of your bone make sure there is flesh on the bone of your bone I don't just want the bone of my bone there must be flesh on the bone he said the bone joined together to his bone he said but there was no flesh in them that is why Adam never just said this is the bone of my bone he also added this is the flesh of my flesh don't marry just the bone of your bone let there be flesh on the bone and there is another dimension where flesh came to the bone he said there was no breath in them so there are people that marry the bone of their bone some marry the flesh of their flesh but there is no breath in the flesh of their flesh and bone of their bone when you are bone of bone it means you are just there existing when you become flesh it means you are there to cover your partner but when you become bread it means you are not just covering you are giving life you are affecting other people hear me and hear me well there's about to be an anointing for productivity that marriage we produce that business we produce that talent we produce that gifting we produce somebody shout i will be productive say i will be productive i must be productive no more unfruitfulness no more unfruitfulness i must be productive i must be productive I was we went to Asaba Delta State in the year 2009 I think to open a church we went there for a crusade and in the midst of the crusade this was 2009 I believe God gave me a prophetic word he said there is a man in this meeting he has been engaged to a lady for 42 years 
I said, Lord, I don't understand. Is the man 42? He said, no. The engagement is 42. That the man, the engagement is 42. The engagement. The man is about 68. But the engagement is 42. I had to worship the Lord to clear the air. Maybe I didn't hear what the Lord was saying. And he said, the woman is in her late 50s. And they are engaged. Not that they are married. And I was troubled and i said it as i said it i saw a man gray with his glasses on his nose holding a woman's hand gray with glass on their nose and they were pulling themselves out walking and he was telling her take it easy take it easy take it easy and they were coming out i was confused i said see your partner he said we are not married i brought her here for confirmation i said sir what are you confirming i want to see the both of you at the end of the service they met me he said our parents betrothed us to each other but every time we try to do something something happens every time we try to do something i'm sorry i'm going to say something that's not nice something happens and i said to him sir with all due respect madam don't get angry if you want to marry this one over 40 years it's not working can't you marry another did they bury your umbilical cord with her if you are about to marry and something is fighting her can't you marry someone else that was out the devil messed them up child of god in two years from that time that man will be 70. how many years more does he have to be alive you are looking for the will of god and your family is looking for your will praying for the will of god and they are praying to to know where you wrote your own will We are in Benin City. We finished preaching. And a lady broke through the protocol and stood in front of me. And the ushers were trying to pull her back. I said, she's already here. You didn't do what you should do. What is the matter? She said, sir, I'm 52. I'm not married. Nobody has proposed marriage to me. And I laid down and I said, get married. She now said, amen. When will you pray for me? I said, I just prayed for you. He said, no. This is serious. I'm 52. This is not this kind of prayer. Pray, pray, pray. I said, get married. The next day, walking out in the evening, she broke through the protocol again, but this time pulling a man. And the man came, and I said, Madam, you again. You brought somebody this time? He said, yes, sir. And she bent her head and began to turn her hands. I was doing like that. I said, why are you doing that? He said, yesterday, when I was going... 52 years i'm blushing <laughs> when i was going when i was going i entered a taxi and i saw this man he said i'm fine <laughs> 52 years nobody has ever said that he said i'm fine in my heart i was telling myself oh this man lied to you this man lied to you this man lied to you but beauty is in the eyes of the beholder and he said i'm fine he said he likes me he took my number he has been calling me since i said when this happened he said after i left when i was going home he said the man said he wants to see me i told him i'm going to church he followed me so i wanted to check if he's the one eh? check i say he's the one in the name of the father he's the one in the name of the son he's the one in the name of the holy ghost after 52 years what are you confirming hear me child of god the earth we produce for you 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 we read the testimony in one that's without number and when i read it i paused because i've been going to america for a while and i know what works in america we got pastors from america here i know what works in america a man sent a testimony he got to america on an immigrant visa and something says you apply for a green card that is stupid you can't just get and apply and he just jokingly got a lawyer and the lawyer told him he was crazy so of course i'm crazy this money just put in it they say are you okay you have an immigrant visa he put it in 14 days later he got his green card it doesn't happen in america at all when i read the testimony i saw people in the studio looking at me i said kai these people are too local if they understand what has just happened they will scream because people have been in america for 20 years no green card people have been in the u.s for 15 years no green card two weeks protocols shattered structures violated 
process sub circumvented. Am I communicating here? Yeah? That you become productive. Five years, no event. No event. No event. No event. Celebration without motion. Celebrating your birthday without moving forward. No birthday should be celebrated if nothing good has been recorded. Can you hear what I said? No birthday should be celebrated if nothing good. Stop celebrating emptiness. Stop, stop accelerating mediocrity. Stop celebrating waste. Stop celebrating vacuum. Stop expansiating void. It's time to celebrate the move of God. Year after year. Year after year. Year after year. Transition without translation. Nothing is happening. Am I speaking to somebody here? Celebration. No motion. Some of my children here, I have, I have canceled many birthdays. Many. And that, my birthday is next week. I said, okay, it's a, it's a very, it's a milestone. A milestone, you know what a milestone is? It's 40, 50, 60, those are milestones. 30, it's a milestone. I was thinking of celebrating it. I celebrate what? Go to the church and pray. In as much as I appreciate God for giving you life. I appreciate God for keeping you till now. But let's not celebrate yet. I say it's actually a milestone where something happened. Chronologically, it does not make it a milestone. It is when something happened that is a milestone. Am I talking to somebody here? It is when you get an answer that's a milestone. Stop celebrating emptiness. Stop expansiating void. You cannot be connected to this commission either by membership or by covering and yet you are stranded on the spot one of the anointings upon my life is to fast forward people i move people 10 years ahead of their time i move people 15 years ahead of their time apostle suleiman is your father and you are not on speed what do you gain am i talking to somebody right now i'm your father you are not experiencing acceleration you are not experiencing progression you are not on fire God told me, say, I give you an anointing to move people decades ahead of their time. Decades ahead. When they become wiser than their teachers because they have learned of his law. You move people ahead of time. One of our pastors said to me, say, I've been following you for almost 30 years. I can't remember when I was a youth. I said, I don't understand. He said, as soon as I met you, I became a man. He said, I can't remember when I was a youth. As I met you, he said, I met you at a teenage age. I just became a man. He said, because I start, I, I matured ahead of my time. He said, there are things that my peers are discussing to me. <laughs> Yesterday, I saw something. I've not told my wife. My son is about eight. My daughter, last daughter is about four, going to five. She's four now. She was playing something on her phone. Now, my son was angry. I said, why are you angry? He said, she's playing what is too childish. He said, she's playing children teen. Uh-uh. <laughs> he said, Daddy, give me your own phone. Let me play with your phone. She's playing mommy's phone. Look at this. Play very children, children. I want adults. I said. <laughs> I said, who is playing children? He said, she now. Very childish, very childish. The young man lives with a father. And by reason of the con, he's thinking ahead of his time. Sometimes my wife says, when he talks, she's looking for who he's talking. It was yesterday I understood what my wife meant. That a child is telling another child that you are childish. <laughs> Am I communicating there? They live ahead. But they move with speed. Can I say this to you? mobility determines productivity if you want to get to lagos from now you can go on a bicycle maximum you get there in one week you know you just paddle your bicycle you get there in one week you can go on what they call a tricycle but we call it here a keke 
na pep you can go on it keke maybe 24 hours or 36 hours you will get there you can go on a luxurious bus i don't know why they call that a luxurious bus they pack everybody like sardine inside luxurious is something that is spacious some am i might talk to somebody here when you say you have luxury you have space that car that they pack they should call it sardine or geisha bus it's not luxurious bus but they pack everybody inside you can get to lagos maybe nine ten hours you can get to lagos also on a a, a small car a toyota that moves with speed you can get to lagos maybe in six or seven hours you can also get to lagos on a commercial plane from benin can take you 45 minutes you get there but you can enter a jet on a private jet it can take you 18 minutes before you sit down you have landed am i talking to somebody here your mobility determines your productivity what you ride on determines how fast you move there are churches you go and they place you on 21 days they say fast on 40 days after 40 days we'll pray with you some give you 80 scriptures give you a pamphlet they say go through this some place you on barry barrage of fasting but you come here and say there's an enemy we killed the enemy that day that day no need 40 days is too much we killed the enemy that day and everyone that's a man of God under the sound of my voice go back to your ministry and move with acceleration move with progression if your amen is louder your life will be better I said if your amen is louder your life will be better when the earth is against you you lack productivity you lack productivity fruitlessness is delay it typifies delay it typifies mockery fruitlessness typifies concern when a man is unfruitful it becomes the concern of everybody when people are becoming concerned when people start you become their, their the top list in their prayer points they are concerned am i communicating they are concerned number two he said none shall prosper when the earth is against you no prosperity the first i said no productivity the second no prosperity no prosperity prosperity is advancement to be prosperous is to be replenished to be prosperous is to be is to be revered to be prosperous is to be to be to get to the zenith of life to be prosperous to be prosperous to be prosperous number one prosperity commands peace i'll run through this and pray on the last one number one prosperity commands peace first somewhere 25 verse 6 prosperity commands peace number two prosperity can be overwhelming the bible says in first kings 10 7 that the prosperity of and fame of of solomon filled the earth that when the queen of sheba came he said i have not had half i am overwhelmed i have not had half half i am overwhelmed i am overwhelmed i am overwhelmed because my eyes are prosperity can be overwhelming you know prosperity can be intimidating your friends can meet you and you take them to your house and they are intimidated. Say, come, when did we leave school? Ah, ah. You achieve all this without gimmicks, without internet fraud, without ritual. Genuine prosperity. I want to say this to you. Anybody involved in internet fraud, hear me. I love you. I don't hate you but i'm advising you because anytime you dupe somebody you attract a spirit if it's illegal it's not, it's not clean money you are taking people's life you are making people cry and you can't make them cry and not cry it's the reality of life 
a Benz is too immaterial to take your life. A Benz, a Mercedes Benz is too small to demand your head. A Mercedes Benz is too small to demand your head. A Jeep, whatever kind of car, is too small to demand your life. You got car and pay with life. You, you built a house and you paid with your life. The greatest deception of people is result. You did it, you rented the house. You did it, you bought a car. Result is a deception. That things are happening. Things are happening. And when the devil wants to ruin a person, he kills his conscience. Advice is immaterial. He, he doesn't see consequence at all. What you think you know now, that thing you think you know, people know it, yet they avoid it. So don't think you are smart. So never think that you did it and you made money because you are smart. People know that thing, but they know the spirit behind it. They know what happens to people that do that kind of thing. So they decide to avoid it, and you did it and you think you are smart. If, if it was that easy, people would have finished it before you found it. So being a yahoo boy doesn't mean you are smart actually you are stupid because that thing you think you know online or not to do people people know it more than you there are people that are it gurus they sleep and wake up with the computer they have the laptop in their brain they can dismantle and assemble a laptop in one hour yet they have never defrauded anybody because they know the spirit behind it so be fraudulent is not being smart being fraudulent is not being smart. Duping people is not smartness. Duping people actually is stupidity. Because if you are not stupid, you are a man. Make money by yourself. Why depending on what somebody else has made? That shows you are weak. You are a weak person. When you spend your whole life going online to check if somebody has dropped money you work for, it shows that you are a weak person. You are not a man. You are a weak person. Real men make money by themselves legitimately. So duping people to make money is a proof of your weakness and laziness. So I don't hate you. I don't hate you. But I hate that practice. Are, are you seeing many of them running mad? Are you seeing many of them dying? And some think, no, it happened to him because he didn't want to do like this. That was what he also said when he saw somebody mad. What you are saying now is what he said too when he saw somebody mad. He felt they were not smart. Somebody sent me a message from Togo that a young boy was seen in the market screaming, no, no, carry your car, I don't want, from Togo. What happened? He did something. They said he should bring his sister. He brought his sister. After one or two years, it was all over him. He should bring his cousin. He brought his cousin. After a short while, the friend who he does business, he submitted his friend. He still can't sleep. They said he should bring his mother. He said, take your, take your money. Go in the market. Go. I don't want. Go. People surrounded him. Now they want my mother. Carry the car. Carry the everything. Go. And we have many like that. You see women disappear. You don't know how. Young girls disappear. Die in their sleep. You don't know how. Young girls womb sealed. Barring for life. You don't know how. Somebody gave you a phone and took a womb. Gave you answers. iPhone 13. And it took your womb of 13 children. iPhone 13 was exchanged with 13 children. You say no. Children, children are still there. Yes. The one that now produced children produced useless children because she has used her children to make call while she was a girl.
somebody is an internet fraudster and is your best friend can't you see your choice of friends can't you see how corrupted your choice is you know what he does for a living and he's your friend he's an azar man and he's your friend somebody somebody you should avoid like a coronavirus patient somebody you should avoid avoid like 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 one of the ruling council members of the taliban in afghanistan somebody somebody should avoid she was my own she was my own i don't care let me tell you hold on the dangers of being a partaker of crime is funny somebody duped and stole 50 million god has planned to deal with him he now gives you hundred thousand and god also plans to deal with you what was your gain out of 50. can't you see you are going to hell for something how can somebody go to hell because of phone phone there are things you do and you know you are qualified for her you know you don't even bother you don't pray you just know that with this thing if you don't go to her you'll be shocked if you don't go there are some people if they make if they make heaven we'll riot all of us will stand on the gate. You know where they say end SARS, end SARS. We say end heaven, end heaven. <laughs> Their conscience dead. I was preaching in Benin. Some boys walked out of the church while I was preaching in Benin, a place called Ugbawa, close to the Uniben gate. They walked out of the church. And at the end of the service, I asked the young man I was preaching. I said, who are those people? <laughs> he said, daddy, you kill me or you kill me. I said, well, I said those are my helpers. As we say, you finish me, daddy, you finish me. I said, your helpers, those small, small boys, how are they helping you? Daddy, they are the movers. They are the movers. Movers, how? Daddy, they are the performers. He now explains, I say, oh, oh, what do they do? He said, I said, you don't advise them that the, the riches of the Gentiles, eh? So I said, sorry. I preach what God put in my heart. When I was leaving, I gave him some money. And I left. Three weeks later, he called me and he was crying. He said, one of his helper is dead. I said, I hope it's not those children I saw. What happened? He had an issue. Somebody was talking to the boy. And the boy jumped from the story building. And was trying to escape on the fence. You know these bars you put on fence. While he was escaping, he slipped and his stomach went straight. The, the, the other end of the rod came out from behind him. Now, no death is good. But there are some yeyetic death. You want to die. You didn't, you didn't know how to die. You didn't see a good way to die. There are some deaths you hear, you get angry. You are, tell, you are telling the cops, even yourself. When you wanted to die, you saw bed, you didn't sleep. You saw chair, you didn't relax. You came to, you came to Okada, to Okada, meet themselves. And you are the middle and you die. What kind of year year death is that? Come out from the other end. And he was crying. I said, The blood of that boy will be on your head. Because you had opportunity. Opportunity. Many, many left this church. Many. Many. Rather than taking my counsel, they felt I was against them. I'm not against you. I, if I love you more than I love others, I'm passionate because I know where you are going to end. There was a Yahoo man from this town. Many of you know what I'm talking about. In the days of the 80s, when you hear all the songs online, it was his name. 
the first time I saw a limousine car was through him. Was making money. Those were not people duping people online. Those were people who started what they call 419. Those are thick. One of them sold Moritala Mohammed Airport. Full airport. He sold it. What? A man to convince all airport workers that he's bringing investors. Gave, printed the letter here. They gave them uniform. Everybody uniform. Brought in white men. Told them his father's name is Moritala Mohammed. That they want to sell his airport. Told the government people are coming to invest. Two full country. One man clashed their head. <laughs> you are a learner. You are a learner. You are carrying laptop about. You are, you are kindergarten. People have done this thing and they have, they, have, they have told the world that it doesn't pay. Full airport. People were flying and all. He brought people to inspect. All of them were inspecting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say, yeah, this is my so so so. This is my worker. And we're greeting. What comes up? How are you? Say, these are my workers. So <laughs> we are fully convinced. Took them, met the leadership of the country. And those get, he met them. He met them. I'm not saying they were met the real leaders. That's why he told them the men are investing. To them, this is what you this is your court. Just be in the office that day. They are investing in this airport. This is what you stand to gain. This is how much. Ah! Are you serious? He said, Yeah, yeah, this is how much you stand to gain. Gave him some money. The man stayed in the office. Anything he said, he must say, Yes, 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 yes. Not knowing somebody was selling full airport. <laughs> Sold it. And by the time they came to arrest him, he said, I said they will arrest everybody now. He measured somebody here, measured someone here. By the time he measured the top people in government, they killed the matter. Say, let's settle this thing off camera. Two countries were quarreling. This country said, it's, it's now our own. This our country said, we can't give it to you. Quarrel start. And one man was somewhere in Holland enjoying his money. <laughs> what are you talking about? You are a learner. Yet today, as I speak to you, he's a cab driver in Lagos. Cab. Uber. You know Uber? So what do you think you have seen or you are seeing now that somebody has not seen? When they advise you, they tell you leave men. Stop jumping from men to men. I beg you. I beg you. Stop jumping from one man to another. I beg you. I beg you. What is my beauty? What am I doing with it? What is my beauty? There are stories of people who we advised. Today, they are very young, but they have become old. The prosperity that God gives is without stain. Blessing of the Lord, make it rich. And you sleep like a baby. Sleep like a baby. Are you following what I'm saying? The prosperity of God is premised on obedience. If they shall obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity. Job 36, 11. Prosperity of God confirms spiritual solidity. You can't say you love God when you have not seen money. If there is nothing to test your love for God, you cannot prove your love for God. David said in Psalm 30 verse 6, I have said in my prosperity, I shall not be moved. To be blessed, to have an appointment today, this morning, you have an appointment by 9, 10, that should bring money. And you turn down the appointment to go to church. That is love of God. So stop saying you love God when there's nothing to test it. Love has to be tested. Spiritual solidity is confirmed by prosperity. Your solidity spiritually is confirmed by prosperity. Prosperity, when God expands and lifts a man, and the man can still pray. The man can still fast. <laughs> the man can still do vigils. The man can still stay awake. 
then your spiritual solidity is confirmed. Prosperity glorifies God than poverty. Psalm 35, 27. For God take pleasure in the prosperity of his people. Prosperity glorify God than poverty. God is more excited when you prosper than when you suffer. God is more excited at your lifting than your decimating. Everyone stretch your hand to me. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I connect to the wings of the wind and I speak to the earth realm. In the name of the Lord Jesus, after now, prosper. I say stretch your hand here. After now, prosper. Prosper. God told me two days ago, hear this, hear this before you sit down, hear this. Everything I've told you about the years that God told me, do they happen? God told me and had it. He said, son, if I tarry to come in 2022, OFM will be one of the richest places on earth. How will that be? He said, I will suddenly raise up young men that will be in their neat billions that will be in their millions of dollars and everyone connected to you either by covering whether the person is a pastor the person is a general of Asia, apostle or working in the ministry or a member he said they will play with money he said he said son members will come to you and say they have too much money they don't know what to do it will not be it will not be problem looking for money to solve it is with money looking for problem to solve i had it from the lord two days ago i had it from the lord he said how it will come will be clean he said we connect many to nations the level of prosperity is going to become a topic of discussion we had this he said they shall they shall write on the media let's investigate how they make money he said, because it will be said that they are too rich. That this is not normal. He said, not you, my son, now. It will be people connected to you. That they will be so blessed. That the blessing will be so awesome. That they will investigate them and they will not see anything illegal. They will come back and they will confirm that it is genuine. It is genuine. There's nothing as painful as when people hate you and yet you are still poor. If you are going to be envious of me and I'm rich, it's okay. To hate me for nothing, to be jealous of me over nothing. When people are jealous of you, I say, what do I even have? It's painful. But when you have so much. My wife said to me one day, he said, why are you worried? My husband. When did you start ministry? And God has done all this for you. If you were not you, wouldn't you suspect you? If to say, not be you, be you. Wouldn't you look back and say, this man. Let's, 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 let's check him. Are you ready? It's an anointing. It takes power to get wet. Degree is good. Certificate is good. But it takes power. Power is ability. It takes power. Thou shall remember. Deuteronomy 8.18 Thou shall remember the Lord thy God. It is he that giveth thee power. Be on your feet. I want to pray. I'm expecting the fulfillment of that prophecy. Hear me? The media can take today's date down. They can take today's date down. The media can do that and write the prophecy somewhere. I saw this ministry having their own airport. I saw this ministry having their own train station. I saw it. Those on the media department can write the date down of what I'm saying. Their own airport, their own train station. I had it.
We are taking two prayers here. Are you ready? 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 How many of you are believing God that it's your season for productivity? It's your season to be productive. It's your season to be productive. Lift your right hand on fire. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it loud and clear.